let's take it again from um, James chapter 1 from verse 14. We are looking at the, the technology of sin, right? Are, are you with me? This is how sin is born and committed and is the same way righteousness is born and becomes holiness. This is where Paul is telling you, yield your body as instruments of righteousness unto holiness. Mortify the deeds of the flesh. Okay? Put to death the motion of sin. And so the body is not a problem now. The body is just a responder to what is in the subconscious mind. Do you get that? And that's why the Bible says, they that are of Christ, they have crucified the flesh and the last thereof. Because the flesh, the same flesh that will do the wrong thing, when you subdue it, like Paul said, I bring my body under, it will do the right thing. So you therefore now know that the controller of the flesh is the subconscious mind. You are a spirit with a soul living in a body. Your spirit will never do wrong. Your spirit is of God. The spirit of every man comes from God. Your spirit will never do wrong. Do you understand that? No man knows the things of man but the spirit of man. No man knows the things of God but the spirit of God. That's why when you became born again, the Holy Ghost went straight into your spirit and joined himself with your spirit and you became one spirit with the Lord. So your spirit and God's spirit can never be separated again when you become born again. Do you understand? So, we therefore need to master the functionality of the soul which is the biggest challenge when we become born again the soul still remain a victim of circumstances upon which god gave us pastor fivefold ministry prophet teacher and evangelist to teach us that we are no longer tossed to and fro all the letters of the apostles they were written to christians none of them were written to sinners and you will hear the apostles says why are there envies among you why are you covetous what? They are talking to believers. They are not talking to sinners. It tells you that there are these believers are still covetous. They are still carnal because they are babes. They need to grow. And when they grow, they outgrow this carnality. The moment you outgrow carnality, it is written in 1 John chapter 2, verse 14, that I have written unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. So the day a Christian grew up to the point where he can control what goes into his subconscious mind, that is the day he becomes a true overcomer. He moves from being a babe to become a young man that has overcome the devil. And from there he grows to become a matured man in the faith. So the, the problem and the answers is that the soul needs to be understood. The functionality of the soul, where the intellects, the reasoning, the emotions sit. And the subconscious is connected to the soul. And so the, the conscious mind is in the soul. The subconscious mind is also connected to the soul. Are you getting what I'm saying? And these two entities, they are spiritual entities and they control things in the realm of the spirit before they manifest in the physical. So for anything to happen in the realm of the physical, it has to pass through the soul. And that's why Jesus Christ calls the devil a thief who came by the fence in John chapter 10. And that's why him, he came by the door, which is the womb through the born into the natural world. That's why Jesus Christ said he came by the door. The door is, in, is with the woman. You, you understand what I'm talking about? But the devil enters the world. The Bible said, by one man's sin entered the world through the soul. And I'm going to show you in the James that we are reading. And that's why Satan is a thief. But Jesus is, is not a thief. So the soul of the man needs to be understood. And that's why uh, um, Solomon says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he also. So Jesus also says, from the heart of man proceeded all evil things. It is not what goes into the man that defies the man, but what comes out of him. Because out of every man is uh, uh, lies, extortion, murder, fornication, adultery. He says all those things come from the heart of the man, from within. I think I need to quickly also explain to you what it means. Many times the Bible uses the terms heart. It's talking about the soul. And inside the soul also is what is called the, the, the mind the, 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 and the subconscious mind. Do you understand that now? Okay, so let's go a little further into that. And the Bible says this, the spirit of a man is the candle of the law, searching the inward part of the belly. Your spirit is always constantly on God's side. And God will always speak to your spirit. God is not going to speak to your, 
to your soul it is your spirit that speaks to your soul all right but many times god will bypass your soul especially when you are speaking in tongues or when you are prophesying your understanding is unfruitful because your understanding is in the soul do you get that as well okay so having understood that then we can now take this revelation to the next level and um, you begin to gain dominion when you understand this, this is how victory will come to you this is how you will be healthy you will be prosperous you will dominate sin all the days of your life are we ready for this so let's read james chapter number where are we james 1 verse 14 so we take it one by one let no man say when i'm tempted verse, verse 13 look james 1 13 i am tempted of god for god cannot be tempted with evil neither tempted he any man what this one is saying is that god doesn't tempt but you read and it came to pass that god tempted abraham it's not temptation that's a misinterpretation temptation usually is evil but trial of faith also can can be interpreted as temptation but you must distinguish by the consequences and who is involved when your faith is being tried like i told you your faith is being tried to prove what is in your subconscious mind whether you have conceived the word of god in your subconscious mind actually trial of faith is so beautiful because it confirms whether you are growing it confirms whether you really know the word of god all right and then trial of faith it will, your faith will be tried with fire and when we talk about trial of faith it's talking about your your subconscious is being tested whether you have created in your in your subconscious mind the picture the images of what the word of god says and the trial of faith is what comes to prove whether you truly have created in your subconscious mind the word of god so that universe can respond and bring it to pass for you or it comes to create to prove whether what is in your subconscious mind is actually not the word of god that's why when the sower saw a seed some fell by the roadside some on among the thorns and some on the rocky ground and some on a good ground and particularly about the one that fell on the roadside the bible says immediately the devil comes and take it away so where is the word sown the word is sown into this into the mind mind you romans chapter 12 from verse 1 and 2 says be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind you see it's the mind that we are dealing with here and satan is so serious that when the word of god is being planted because the, the bible says in hearing they hear not in seeing they see not lest by chance they believe believing means you are able to conceive the word of god into your subconscious mind process through your mind all right and it is called when your eye of understanding is enlightened that's why jesus also was speaking when he says if the high in you be single your body shall be full of light he's talking about the subconscious mind but if that eye is darkness great is that darkness because the man is doomed as long as his subconscious mind is blocked and apostle paul is saying our if our gospel is hidden it's it only to them who are lost whom the god of this world has blinded their mind it is the mind now that they believe not the moment you are able to rescue the mind the man is rescued all these mad people you see around time nothing is really wrong with those people what is wrong with them is that the devil has possessed their mind the devil is the one controlling their mind so for you to deliver a madman you just need to address the demon that has possessed his mind like the mad madman of gadarin that inside him are legions of demons and jesus cast out all the legions and the man was free instantly so he said in hearing they hear not in seeing they see not their their heart is dull of hearing dull of hearing are you getting what i'm saying the moment the mind is taken care of the man is taken care of poverty is in the mind failure is in the mind illiteracy is in the mind prosperity is in the mind whatever the mind is able to process as thoughts and conceive in the subconscious mind the mind the man will act that's what the body will now respond to you are first of all sick in your mind before you can be sick in your body you are first of all poor in your mind before you can be poor physically everything begins from the mind of the man so the moment the mind is transformed 
the, the man will be transformed. That's why Romans 12, 2 says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's the key. The moment you are able to have your mind renewed, your life will be renewed. You are going in this direction before, you follow a different direction because you have conceived something else in your subconscious mind. And it's in the Bible. I'm not teaching Greek. This is the word of God. Okay. Now it says, let no man say when I'm when he's tempted, he's tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. It's simply saying, God doesn't tempt anybody with evil. Because in him is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. There is no darkness in God at all. Okay, and God does not tempt any man. That's what the Bible is saying. God doesn't tempt anybody with evil. So when you hear God tempted Abraham and told him to offer Isaac, he's just trying to try his faith and he passed the test. Do you understand? And my Bible told me that Abraham received Isaac back in a figure, which means he went into his imagination. He processed what God has told him earlier, that he threw Isaac all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And he taught Isaac and he said, he had an agreement with Isaac. Let's do this. God will provide a lamb for the sacrifice. And Abraham believed God. Abraham conceived the image of what God was trying to say to him and it was counted unto him for righteousness. I've taught in this dimension also before when Habakkuk said, I will stand upon my watch and see what he will say and what, shall, what, what I shall answer. You have to see it. And the scene is first of all in your mind. This is also how the prophetic also operates in some dimension. Until you see it in your subconscious mind, you cannot believe it. It comes from your spirit. Your spirit is able to design it. And when your spirit designs it, it transports it to your mind. Your mind processes it with your reasoning, with your thinking, with your faculty. And the moment the mind processes it, without the interruption of the devil, the mind sends it straight to the subconscious mind. When it gets to the subconscious mind, whatever settles in the subconscious mind is what the man becomes. So the spirit, the soul, and the body. From God, God speaks through your spirit to your soul. Your soul sends the signal to your subconscious mind who sends it to your body. Body responds to the things that are in the subconscious mind. And that's why Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 5, that if you look unto a woman to lust after her, you have committed adultery with her already in your heart. You see the process? You And I explained that to be you saw this woman, you strip her naked with your eyes. In your imagination, you saw yourself on the same bed with her. You saw yourself doing the thing. And then you even finished it in your imagination. The next thing, you 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 conceive that idea in your subconscious mind. Once you, once you save that file in your subconscious mind, once you save it in your subconscious mind, nobody can stop you. It will happen. It's a process. It's a matter of time. For it not to happen, it will require a higher power, which is in the word of God, to recreate what is stored in the subconscious mind and delete what is in the subconscious mind. So when you become born again, something happens. The Bible says Jesus Christ. The word. The Bible says God by Jesus Christ purge our conscience. You see consciousness. The conscience was purged from dead works, because before you can be transformed, your conscience needs to be cleansed. So when we become born again, the Lord went mysteriously into our subconscious and delete all the files of the devil that are there. And you feel you felt light. And all the demons that are sitting on your subconscious mind and bothering your mind were cast out. And immediately the Bible says, you now, as a, as a, as a newborn babe, desire the sincere milk of the word of God that ye may be able to grow thereby. So the more of the foul, the consciousness of God's word that is in your subconscious mind, stored there, we make you a strong believer. So to be strong in the Lord, he said, I word have I eat in my heart. Do you understand that? That I might not sin against you. In the subconscious mind, he hid it. In this subconscious mind, so I've told you, when you hear the heart in the Bible, it's talking about, it can be talking about the spirit, it can be talking about the soul or the subconscious mind. You have to dis- determine who, which one in particular is it talking about. But the people in, who interpreted the Bible may not have this understanding. They just interpreted as scholars. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So back to the parable of, of, the, of, of, this, of the sower. 
The sower sowed the seed. The first seed by the roadside. This talks about the people that did not understand what they ate at all. And so immediately, see how serious Satan is. He immediately comes, takes the word, and deletes it from their mind. It, it's not processed at all. Their eye of understanding is blackened, darkened. Okay? So they cannot see. And what are they supposed to see with here? They are supposed to see with the eye of the spirit. And the eye of the spirit is in the soul. Okay? And that is why Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter 1 that daily I bow my knee that the eye of your understanding, the eye of your understanding is talking about your spiritual eye. So your spiritual eye actually is connected to your subconscious mind. Okay? It's, are you, are you with me? So the moment your spiritual eye is darkened, everything that's supposed to be happening to you for good, you will not be able to do it. But when your spiritual eye is enlightened by the word of God, when evil is coming, that's what Hebrews chapter 4, the word of God is quick, sharper, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Listen carefully. Even to the dividing asunder of soul and what? And spirit. So it means God's word will help you to discern what is coming from your spirit or what is coming from the devil straight to your soul. Because Satan has no technology for your spirit, but he has the ability to block your spirit from reaching your soul. Okay? He will block your soul from receiving from your spirit. And because he knows the moment your spirit communicates to your soul, that is when you start feeling guilty. And every man has a spirit. That's why the worst of sinners feels guilty. When he, when he, you understand, he feels guilty. What is making him feel guilty is the spirit of God in him, which is never wrong. Makes him realize, this person's, you went to steal this person's stuff. It's not good. It's not the devil that is telling you it's not good. It is the spirit. It is your spirit. All right? Are you, are you with me? This person went to sleep with his friends, with her friend's husband. And after leaving the place, she began to feel guilty. It's not the devil that makes him feel guilty. It is his spirit. But there are some people, the Bible says, they've seared their conscience with hot irons. Such people, they will never feel any guilt again. Because their conscience has been blocked completely from their spirit. They are sold out for evil. This is how the Antichrist will be. He has no more conscience. He has blocked his conscience completely. He has sold himself to sin. Do you understand that platform? So, and then there are some fell on the good ground. I mean, some, some fell among the thorns. And the Bible says when they receive the word of God, they are not with joy. They receive it. But the word they receive did not mix with faith in their heart. Where the word mixes with faith in the heart is, is, in, the, is in the soul. Once it mixes with faith, you are able to create the right picture of the word of God and send the file and save it in your subconscious. You shall have whatsoever you say after that. No matter what happens, you will say what is in your subconscious mind. You will not believe anything less. That's why, that's why Paul said, up to today, some people still have the consciousness of an idol. But to us, there is only one God. He's born again, but he still believes there are other gods somewhere. You see, it's in the subconscious mind. For that person to come out of such mindset, it needs to be, those files needs to be deleted from his subconscious mind. And the file of authenticity of the word of God now needs to come into the subconscious mind. He says some up to today, they still have the consciousness of sin. They still have the consciousness of idols. When they eat things over to idols, they, are, they still feel guilty. And that's why the Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians that you that is strong, be careful that you don't make your brother who is weak in faith to fall. When he sees you eat things that are offered unto idols, you have to be careful so you don't let them stumble because their conscience is what? Weak. Okay. I want to show you something quickly for you to be able to understand what the Bible is calling conscience. Yeah? For you to see that the conscience being spoken about here is talking about the subconscious mind. 1 Corinthians 8, 4 to 8 and um, Titus 1 verse 15. Okay, so 1 Corinthians 8, 4 to 8. As concerning therefore the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that an idol, an idol is nothing in the world and that there is none other God but one. But listen, for though there be that are called gods, 
whether whether in heaven or on earth as there be gods many and lords many okay there are so many idols that's what he's talking about here verse 6 but to us christians born again spirit filled tongue talking bible leader filled with the holy ghost there is but one god and father of whom are all things and within we in him and one lord jesus christ by whom are all things and we by him glory to god revelation for another day verse 7 nevertheless how be it, there is not in every man that knowledge that understanding that revelation you see that revelation is what paints a picture in your mind that goes into your subconscious mind and gets stored there and once you conceive and save that understanding in your mind it deletes the wrong notion that other people still have that there are many idols or these idols are still existing because to us there is only one God and any other idol is nothing to us okay because the Bible says an idol is nothing in this world all right according to first Corinthians 8 from verse um, 4 as concerning therefore the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols we know that an idol is nothing an idol is nothing in the all in this world an idol is nothing so all those people who are worshiping idols and the demon behind those idols are nothing this is a revelation also so this is what it means when light shines when you catch a revelation of the word of god you see motion picture you are able to see with your spiritual eye and the moment your spiritual eye sees the eye of your understanding the eye of your mind that you need to have it saved in the subconscious mind and to walk in the consciousness of it that's why the conscience leads to what is called consciousness so once it gets saved in your conscience you become conscious of it and your conscience is the subconscious mind i know i'm saying a lot of things there is a conscious mind there is the subconscious mind all right the conscious mind is what you use to think i'm thinking about this thing i can see this thing i'm conscious of where i'm standing right now so the subconscious mind is not always maybe 100 percent status conscious of things but it reacts based on the things that's already saved therein the reaction of the of the man the body the brain the nervous system the organs of the body they are always based on the subconscious mind it is part of the consciousness of a man but it is the one that saves the pictures that forms the attributes of the man the attitude of the man to life issues to situations to circumstances so how a person react or act in particular scenarios situations and circumstances they are all based on the revelations good or bad that has been stored in the subconscious mind over the years yesterday this morning so when you catch a revelation this moment it changes your attitude and approach the next moment all right so let's go further verse what verse are we holy spirit okay verse 7 how be it there is not in every man that knowledge for some with conscience of the idol they are conscious of idol in their subconscious mind is already stored there that witches and wizards are powerful the new age the the the, the occultic groups are they are powerful mm. <laughs> glory to god so even as a child of god is afraid of them because it's, it, there is a picture that has been stored in his subconscious mind which he may not always walk in such consciousness but it's stored in the subconscious mind that's why it is the subconscious mind so the reaction to situation and circumstances are not always based on what you are conscious of the subconscious mind react subconsciously hallelujah so some are conscious they have the conscience of an idol up to unto this hour okay they eat all as if they eat as a thing offered unto an idol and their conscience being weak is defiled so the weak conscience is easily defiled and what makes a conscience weak is lack of the knowledge of the truth it is lack of the knowledge of the truth and this is where the apostle was saying we need to contend earnestly for the faith you need to prove the word of god feed your spirit speed your spirit man your soul renew it with the word of god and strengthen your inner man 
strengthen your conscience with the revelation of the truth ahead of time when situation and circumstances arises subconsciously you react you react subconscious you are not negotiating with anything that is contrary to the awesome truth all right so it is your subconscious mind now that determines everything about the man okay because that's the picture that a man is going to continually relate to whatever picture has been put in his mind this is how also the brain of man is developed this is how education becomes effective most people that call themselves dull not excellent is because they are not able to awaken the subconscious mind as a trained engineer there are certain things that we just be subconsciously natural with me there is a way i react to situation and circumstances that are built environment and engineering related because i have been trained so in my subconscious mind i have been trained when i was being trained in in class theoretically there are pictures that were being generated in my mind and when practical come i draw from those theoretic knowledge to apply the same thing with any kind of education it it is a way of storing a revelation in the mind of how these things ought to be therefore if that thing is going to change that's why the bible says you cannot put a new wine in the old wine skin because it's going to get turned off you put new wine in a new wine skin because the old wine skin cannot comprehend what the new wine concentrate is all about so for the old wine for, for the new wine to be put in an old wine the old wine skin needs to be changed to a new one so knowledge needs to be upgraded when knowledge upgrades the revelation of the mind also upgrades so continually you keep upgrading yourself in the knowledge of god the same way you need to upgrade yourself in science and technology there is an upgrade that keeps coming coming up those who do not upgrade themselves in the knowledge of their field they become obsolete because the the new knowledge has create a new picture in the mind some years ago telephone are uh, a big box computer can fill a whole house but with a new revelation now compared to those who study computer those days they have become obsolete if they are not upgrading their knowledge like some professors in the universities who are not upgrading knowledge that even the student they are teaching knows better than them in certain sub subject and such such certain area so why the student is telling the lecturer the lecturer is backing the student wrong because the student has upgraded knowledge he has a different revelation in his mind but the lecturer is refusing to upgrade knowledge do you understand thank you holy spirit all right glory to god so a weak conscience is the one that is not strong in the knowledge of the of god in knowledge of the word of god and is defiled and if you remember what jesus christ said that it is the things that comes out of the man that defiles the man so you see where is it coming from it's coming from his subconsciousness once whatever is sown into the subconsciousness good or bad we either make a man righteous or make him evil he's talking about the revelation of the subconscious mind the, the vision of the subconscious mind is what defines the status of the man whether he is righteous or he is not righteous whether he is pure or defiled and jesus christ says it is those things that defiles a man the things that come from within the subconscious mind defiles the man but meat commended not us not to god for neither if we eat or are we better neither if we eat not are we worse jesus christ says, it's not what we eat that defines us or defiles us it is what comes out from within the man in the subconscious mind that is taught there through the process of thinking, imagination, processing. And that's why I try to define the difference between thoughts and imaginations to you. And I will still go uh, into this dimension as well. So now let's look at Titus chapter 1. Um, Titus chapter 1 verse 15. Unto the pure, all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled, and unbelieving you see defilement and unbelieving goes together it's nothing pure no matter how you are trying to portray to this person this is the way to do it this is how to do it this person is going to refuse for you have you been with old women before who have a particular way of preparing a particular recipe and when you are bringing a new recipe to them they don't want to hear have anything to do about it i remember precisely in my culture the elders they, they prefer a pounded yam that is sweated over with piston and mortar in, 
as against the one that is processed and made in powder that can be prepared in the next five minutes they want that one that is going to come through sweat through pounding that may take the next one hour to prepare they don't want the, the pando yam they don't want the powder uh, powdered yam as against the cooked one and pounded one <laughs> it's it's a it's a it's a mentality it's a consciousness it's a mindset so when we talk about mindset when we talk about mentality when we talk about the picture of the mind when we talk about revelation of the mind or revelation of the heart we are talking about what is stored in the subconscious mind which the subconscious mind is not always 100 percent conscious of what we react to or act towards by default when circumstances that warrants us reactions and actions arises and this is how faith also works it is impossible for you not to speak the word of faith because the bible says we have in the same spirit of faith we believe we have stored this revelation this understanding in emotion picture in our subconscious mind through the process of imagination through the process of meditation and as a result we it becomes faith in the eye which is righteousness emotion picture well sent well set out scenarios of the word of god and so when situation arises that want to produce that you react immediately you speak the word of faith we have in the same spirit of faith which came to us through meditation of the word of god through hearing of the word of god through searching of the word of god we saw a light shone oh this is what the lord said by his stripes i was ill already in isaiah chapter 53 and Psalm 103 says, He healed all my diseases. So I know I must continually claim my healing every day and I cannot be sick because He said it will take sickness far from my tabernacle. So I have a revelation of divine health. And so when sickness tries to show up to damage that picture in my subconscious mind, my subconscious mind will react and the reaction will be based on what I say. I am not sick. I can never be sick based on the revelation of the word of God. And you see, immediately, you may not see the result, but the, the body begins to adjust to what the subconscious mind already believes. That is how God made man. Rabande So, and the um, an unbelieving is to the unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind, you see, their mind and conscience is defiled. <laughs> I love this scripture. Both the mind and both the conscience are defied because you see the mind is different from the conscience in this regard you see that the mind is the mind where the thought processes take place where imagination takes place all right and the conscience in this regard is the subconscious mind we are the picture that is generated and the imagination that is generated is stored that's why Ephesians 3 20 says now unto God that is able to do exceeding abundantly above what you can ever ask or imagine so when you imagine, imagination is not vague, it is vague until you save it in the subconscious mind. While you are meditating, until you believe, you see that meditation saved in your subconscious mind, it is not counted unto you for iniquity, it is not counted unto you for righteousness. As we are going to see in the scriptural analysis of James that we are studying, I believe this makes sense, all right? When God brought Abraham again and mentioned it to number the stars, he was seeing in his mind, he began to picture in his mind the, the faces of all his children and generation. And the Bible said, once he saw that, he was able to conceive it in his subconscious mind. He saved it in his subconscious mind. And the Bible said, he believed God. To believe means ability to see the motion picture of what the word of God says, or word of Satan, or word of men, or word of your parent, or word of your friend, word of your wife, word of your children, whatever anyone is is saying and so you now see the picture and that's why you see when people are talking to you, you say oh i see because we are seeing what they are saying i see i see i see once you see like that and you accept it you believe it if you have a contrary opinion you react to what that person is showing you through words because words create pictures and when you see you said you see and you consent if it agrees with what you want you conceive it you accept it okay even in business and in a meeting, the same thing happened. In family discussion, the same thing happened. You have to see and accept it in your mind before you can act upon it. Whatever a man does not see and accept in his mind, he cannot act upon it. Children will not go that way until they see. So you must always find a way for people to see what you are saying. 
So, and this is what God does. God always wants us to see, according to Habakkuk chapter 2, what he says. And the moment we see it and we agree to it, it becomes immediately saved in our subconscious mind. And when circumstances and situation comes, we react based on that. Because once it's saved in our subconscious mind, we have acquired another dimension of the spirit of faith, like Caleb and Joshua had another spirit because they had a different picture other than the one that their friend the other ten saw when they went to spice the land of Canaan. those ones saw giants uh, uh, that will kill them they won't survive but caleb and joshua saw giants that they that they cannot miss and god is going to help them to overcome them because they have a different spirit because in their subconscious mind they are seeing god's capacity god's ability to overcome anything so they they, they refuse to walk by sight they chose to walk by faith to walk by faith means to walk based on what you have already stored in your subconscious mind earlier than the present situation it is the same thing david used to kill goliath the knowledge of the capacity and the power and the ability of god was their victory and that is why Apostle John said, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. It means the moment you store the word of God, the knowledge of God, the ability of God, the power of God in your subconscious mind, no matter the situation, you're already an overcomer. No matter what the devil tries to do, no matter what rises against you, at the back of your mind, that's what we call it, at the back of your mind, is the subconscious, at the back of your mind. In your subconscious mind, you know God is able to do exceedingly abundantly, far above what you can ever ask or imagine. You know God is never weak. You know God is for me and that's why where faith comes in but you have if you have something else at the back of your mind you don't know your god and daniel say only the people that do know their god shall be strong and do exploit and that's why the knowledge of god produces faith the knowledge of god produces strength for your spirit man which is your subconscious mind connected to your soul i believe this helps you as we pro as we proceed in jesus name you see what I'm talking about? The conscience is weak in the subconscious mind is what he's talking about. They don't have enough of God's word in their conscience to overcome the guilt that the devil will bring to them. Okay? Maybe I can give you an example. When I was young and um, my parents were trying to stop me from going to church every now and then. Um, one day, and so I went to church without their permission because nobody can stop me from going to the house of God. And then where I went, we say, we, the church was building a new property. Are you with me? So it's not actually the church where we are, we are fellowshipping. We were, I went to join the brethren to help in building the house of God. So I was carrying the concrete on my head happily. So when I went back home, my mom asked me, where did you go? I said I went to church okay and immediately I said that something tells me inside me that I've lied and can you believe for three four days I was walking in that guilt that you didn't go to church you went to, to church site I was feeling guilty for days so I had no option I think the next meeting day or I had to go and meet my pastor and I said sir I think I've lied I was a young believer are you following me I think I've lied. And he said, what happened? And I told him the story. He laughed. He said, so here where you went, whose house is it? Is it the house of Satan? Is it not the house of God? I said, it's the house of God, but we are still building it. <laughs> he said, shut up, my friend. This is the house of God. You know, immediately that spirit left me. And I was, the, the guilty consciousness left me. So you see now, I was feeling guilty because I was ignorant. So my pastor deleted the file of ignorance by installing the right file in my subconscious mind. And I never felt guilty after that. So I left the place, I started processing. Come to think of it, I was at, it's actually the house of God, it's actually church. So if the devil tries to come back to me, which he never did, I would have told him off. So you see, your victory now is in the revelation you have in your subconscious mind. And Satan knows what is in your subconscious mind. And how does he know? He comes to tempt you with a negative um, file. Once you reject that, he knows that there is a positive one in your subconscious mind. Even you now, everything you are feeling guilty about, 
is because the enemy is taking advantage of what is stored in your subconscious mind. And so when I install this new file into your subconscious mind, you will see the way you will feel with joy. You will be happy. And Satan now says, okay, let me afflict this one. She doesn't know the, the functionality of the subconscious mind. She doesn't know the functionality of the soul. So I'm going to afflict her. And so the Bible says again in the, in the Bible of the soul uh, that the, some fell among the thorns. They are not with joy and after a while they were choked because of what? Persecution and the love of the lust of other things. You see, that is very significant. Persecution comes to prove what is saved in the subconscious mind. The devil came to see this word that this person received and claiming to be born again. Let me prove whether he actually believes and understand what it means to be born again. Let me test the picture in his subconscious mind. So persecution comes to test that. The Bible says, they that will live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution by default because it comes to test what is in your subconscious mind. It comes to test whether you truly have believed that Jesus is the only way and nothing can take Jesus away from you. Do you understand why persecution comes now? That's the same way you'll be tempted with money with your husband. You'll be tempted with changing figures at work. You'll be tempted to change. You, they all come just to prove whether you have captured in your mind the picture of righteousness and store it in your subconscious mind. That's all that the, the devil does. That's how to subdue the devil, therefore. That's how to raise godly children. That's how to be glorious for God. That's how to be holy. It's in the subconscious mind. Do you understand now? And so he says, some fell among on the rock, on the rock. It didn't last. That one never even went past anywhere in your mind. It just dried up. But some fell on a good ground. Where is the good ground? Subconscious mind. Where it mixed with faith and it was dropped there. That's a good ground. The mind was pure washed by the blood of Jesus, receive the word of God, step into the good ground, and the Bible says it bringeth forth fruit. Some 30 fold, some 50, 60, some 100. What does that mean? The same word that they heard is what we hear, but what they heard did not profit them because it did not mix with faith in their mind. Because it's not able to process the word, generate a picture with it, conceive it into the subconscious mind. So this is where you now have to see differences in the measure of results and differences in the measure of grace that christian produce the same word that i heard about prosperity i'm able to process it and conceive in my subconscious mind i'm going to be a multi-millionaire persuade conceive the same word we heard the same message from apples to david right and then we persuade receive that word and say now i know i will get a better job with better salary david conceived the same word and says i know I'm going to be a multi-millionaire. I need to start my own business. So this other sister or brother got the same revelation to get a new job. She believes that a new job will come with better salary. That's what she will get, 30 foot. Another brother believes, oh, now I know I'm going to get a job. Let me start my own small business. Because the word of God says I shall be the head only and not the tail. And he has conceived the image of that in his mind. And has received it in his subconscious mind. And then you will see after a while he will start a small business. But there is another brother that said, look, with this revelation, now I know. He teaches my hands to war and my hands to fight. God teaches me to profit. I have power for wealth. It means, therefore, I can have a product that would sell globally hundredfold. That's where the difference is. It's all in the subconscious mind. That's why as a man thinks in his mind, through to his subconscious mind, whatever picture is able to conceive and save in his subconscious mind, he will become it. The body will respond to it and universe also will respond to it. Do you now understand? Okay, now having said that, I think we can quickly go back to our text scripture, which is um, James chapter 1. Praise God. I believe the Lord has tremendously opened your eyes with this teaching. I will be continuing on part 2 next week. Do not miss it. But at this moment, I'd like to pray for everyone in any kind of situation and circumstances, particularly those who are struggling with habits of any kind. 
sicknesses and diseases this is practical time and you will see the wonders that is going to happen because i'm going to go straight into your subconscious mind i'm going to take authority over demonic forces that are using your subconscious mind against yourself and i'm going to have to set you free set your mind free and set your body free set your life free in the name of jesus are you ready for this father in jesus name i thank you for the power of your word and the grace that you have released that accompany the word that you have given to us at this time i pray for my brothers and sisters i pray for this even this sinner who by these we come to the knowledge of the truth today to know that once a mind or his mind is free he is free to know jesus christ in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ father i take authority over every demonic forces powers ruling over any mind under the influence of your voice i bind them and i cast them out in jesus name i command normalcy over that nunatic spirit abnormal spirit every lost mind is restored in the name of jesus in any way the devil has gained control of the subconscious mind and the mind of anyone father i set those mind free right now by the power of the blood of jesus i set those mind free now in the name of jesus everyone under the siege of affliction of sicknesses diseases of all kinds through the subconscious mind i bind those demons and cast them out in jesus name i remove those defaulted picture in the subconscious mind i install the word of faith into those mind and the subconsciousness in the mighty name of jesus christ begin to see light begin to see what the power of god can do begin to see god in the light of who he is begin to let the word of god be activated in your mind through to your subconscious mind receive faith for healing faith for deliverance faith for breakthrough faith for your business let faith rise by the gift of faith in your life right now in the name of jesus in your mind in your subconscious in the name of jesus christ I see chains broken. I see mind being let loose, body lifted, freedom of all kinds in the name of Jesus. Healing taking place right now. You are not sick. You are not diseased. You are not having any infirmity. You are free from all curses in the name of Jesus Christ. Be free. Be healed in the name of Jesus because Jesus paid the price for your healing. By his stripes you were healed. Be healed. Begin to see the healing. Begin to see breakthrough. Begin to see your elevation. Begin to see your marriage. Begin to see your new life. See the house. See the elevation. See the fulfillment of God's promise. May your eye of understanding be enlightened today and right now in the name of Jesus. Be free from every blackness and darkness of your mind and the eye of your understanding. In Jesus name. Let the light shine in the name of jesus let your spiritual eye be opened and begin to see what the lord says in jesus mighty name amen i love you and remain blessed don't forget to join our channel subscribe to this channel and get into the video catalog and search for the one that is relevant to your situation you shall be blessed and invite people to join this group and to join our online church without wars in the name of jesus christ i remain your servant and pastor apostle ambassador david longer the lead pastor of jesus global ecclesia join me in school of revelation next week and you shall be blessed in jesus name